Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video where we are going to talk about progressive web apps, also known as PWAs. And PWAs are essentially web applications that are developed using a number of technologies and certain patterns to take advantage of both web and native um, app features. Now, it's a common you know, thought that that native apps have like, uh, you know, are more performant or have like, you know, certain features um, that web applications can't do. But that's actually where PWAs come in because they can actually be installed on the home screen. They can work offline. They can receive push notifications. And there's also quite a lot of other features. Um, there's this site out there. It's called what PWA can do dot today. And if you um, go to the site on your mobile device, uh, then you will be able to click on this um, install to home screen button. And well, these are all kinds of features that some are more like experimental, but most of them will work. And, you know, it can do a lot, honestly, you know, you can um, have media capture so you can have like your camera inside of your application geolocation. Um, uh, well, you can can see it here, you know, like NFC tags, you can write or or read them uh, build in AR, uh, you can get the uh, motion sensors to work, right? You have multi touch, there is so much you can do as of today with progressive web apps that there isn't much left anymore that um, in terms of features, you can't do um, on the web anymore compared to a native application. And now you might also ask yourself, what does this actually have to do with performance? And that's a good question, of course, and we will get into that in the last part of this video. Uh, but also for the performance it has uh, of your application, it has huge benefits. But I think the main reason for PWAs to exist is to kind of like leverage what we can do on the web. So if you think about native applications, right, they are capable of many things, right? They have, there's a lot of possibilities you can do. However, their reach is smaller because, you know, people have to actually download it in order to use it. And what you often also see is that a lot of people, they are not really interested in downloading an app that is, I don't know, 80 meg megabytes or something or even more to just, you know, let's say uh, use the app once or, or maybe a couple of times a year. So that's where, of course, the web comes in. Um, there you have a, you know, a huge reach because it's, you simply have to go to the URL and, you know, the app loads. Um, but the capabilities um, were previously, you know, they, they were low, right? There were like not a lot of native features you could, you could use in, in web apps and that's where PWAs come in. So they kind of like are this hybrid between native apps and web apps and, and try to, well, kind of like make use of, uh, of the best of both worlds. Um, so, so let's actually take a look at some pros and cons between a PWA versus a native app. So what's nice with a, um, progressive web application is that you have a seamless experience because you use the exact same code for your application that's on the web and also that is um, being shown on Android and iOS. So you have you know a very seamless experience and that's simply because it comes from one code base. Um, usually PWAs are also very small. Um, you know, we're talking about the size of pretty much, let's say your React app, um, which is, you know, give or take below one, one, two megabytes, something like that. Um, whereas, um, well, a lot of native applications, they take at least tens um, of, uh, of megabytes. And the nice thing is as, as well is that your users do not actually have to update the app, just as with a React application, as soon as you um, make changes and you, you know, you put them online, your user is directly able to make use of the updated application. So uh, I think a very important for a lot of businesses simply is that they are cheaper to build compared to native applications because if you want to make a native application and you want to support both Android and iOS and you're not using, let's say, technologies like React Native or um, Flutter that allows you to make 
these kind of hybrid um, apps, then you have to, you know, you have to have a special team that works on Android apps and another team that works on iOS apps. So you're kind of like building the app twice and that's simply taking so much uh, more time to build and thus will cost you a lot of more money um, or at least it will cost the company a lot of more money. And, uh, that, you know, that there's also some downsides to PWAs compared to native apps. So at least for iOS devices, the performance is weaker. Um, there's also hardware and operating system uh, feature limitations. Uh, like I said before, there are still some features that um, cannot be uh, done on the web compared to um, native uh, technologies. It also consumes a bit of more battery power and it's a relatively new technology. So you also see like in the, especially in the past couple of two, three years, you know, definitely some things has been changing around PWAs and, and how to implement it. Um, but, you know, honestly speaking, I, I think if you have a good use case for a PWA, um, it's definitely worth it. And the pros for sure will outweigh the, um, the cons. So when is a web app actually a PWA? Well, there's actually three things your application needs to use in order to be considered a PWA. First of all, it needs to be using a secure connection. So HTTPS, which you can um, get set up with an SSL certificate, uh, which is not that difficult. And even some, um, you know, platform providers, they uh, provide the SSL certificate out of the box. So that's not um, that difficult. Then you also have service workers and a service worker is a script that allows intercepting and control how a browser handles network requests and um, asset caching. And we'll get into that later because that's, well, probably the most um, advanced part of, of, of making um, an application a PWA and a manifest dot JSON file, or actually a manifest file, which is a JSON file. And that is controlling how your app looks to the user. So if a user, let's say, um, are prompted to install the application on their mobile, um, you know, the manifest.json file will, for example, um, contain the name of the application, um, the logo that should be used, the team colors that, that are in there during the initial loadup. Um, so that's more like, uh, well, how the app is showing up to, to the users. Um, so let's actually take a look at how we can make a PWA with React. So in this video, we're going to um, create a JavaScript version of the PWA, uh, but you can also add TypeScript. So what I would do, I will say MPX create React app. And then we have to uh, say the name of our app. I would just call it my app PWA. And then um, actually previously um, the, uh, well, the service worker and, and you will see that in a minute, but everything you needed to set up your PWA came with create reactive out of the box, but now they seem to have um, split it. So in the, like the, like the normal version of create react app, you do not get these files, but you can do so anyway by um, adding a template and that will be the create react app, oops, create react app template PWA. And if you want to, let's say, set this up with TypeScript, you can say TypeScript. Um, but for this video, we will just use um, JavaScript. So I will install this and get back to you once it's done. All right, so it has installed. So I will cd into my app PWA and I will just restart my code editor. All right, so um, the first thing we want to do is register the service worker in the index.js file. So if I go down here, you see we have the index.js file and here it says service worker registration unregister but instead of that we want to say register so that's the first thing we have to do and 
Um, the second thing you usually want to do is change the manifest.json file, which you can find in the public folder right here. And there is the manifest.json file. And this is, for example, where you can, well, like I said before, uh, set the name of your application. You can uh, set, put your icons in here, uh, which you can actually put right here. Um, there's the team color, the background color. Uh, so you can change this uh, accordingly. So for, for this video, we'll not be doing that. Um, and well, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, it it's very simple. However, I'd like to take a look with you um, at service workers because that's actually where the, the magic happens. So by default, um, a service worker will be provided by uh, the Create React App template. And as you can see right here, we have the service worker register file um, and we have the service worker.js file. And as you can see, um, this file is importing uh, certain functions from Workbox. And if we go to the package.json file, you also see that we have quite a lot of Workbox dependencies. And Workbox is essentially a set of libraries that simplifies the process of managing service workers um, and is actually uh, created by Google. So it makes it easier for developers to, you know, like migrate their app from a traditional app to a progressive web app uh, and well you can go through the file and, and take a look at what's going on here but the most important thing um, what's done right here because you can also customize this uh, although the defaults are pretty nice out of the box but this is what I'd like to um, to to draw your attention to you see right here it says pre-cache all of the assets generated by your build process uh, and the what Workbox is actually doing, it's using the cache storage API that's provided by um, most of the browsers. And that allows for a faster caching mechanism. And that's where the performance aspect comes in because that makes your app um, or can make your app a lot faster, especially um, if your user starts revisiting your app, like on the initial load, um, your app is not faster might even take a little bit longer to load but if they visit your app let's say for the second or third time and there are case studies um that show that the app is like almost in uh, rendering instantly uh which of course is is great for your users um i think a good source to read about all these uh case studies is pwastats.com and here you see a lot of companies that have uh, migrated their app from like a traditional app to a PWA and um, well then they start measuring all kinds of things like conversion rates or, or speed or you know can be different things um, and they will um, well they will share that with the public uh, and there's really big companies uh, in here you know Starbucks is a very um, popular use case Tinder uh, Pinterest Twitter light you know, there's so many big companies right now that have migrated their app to uh, to a PWA um, version. So, you know, of course, you have to take a look whether a, a PWA suits the purpose of your application, right? Um, but I think just solely for that performance aspect, it can bring you a lot of value. Um, so if you have the chance to um, uh, to create a PWA, you know, do it. Um, try to see if it works for you, and uh, and if it doesn't work, you can simply uh, um, like unregister, like you saw in the index file right here, and you will just go back to a traditional app. Um, but for like you know like desktop users, not a lot of things is 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 changing except for the fact that um, they also uh, uh, make use of those uh, they, those that cache API, so they they do benefit from the from the caching that's uh, that's built in there. Um, for mobile users, you know they they can decide to download the app on their phone, but on the other hand, if they won't do that, they will also benefit from those performance improvements.
So I think the takeaway from this video should be like, if you have the chance to um, make use of PWA technologies, you know, do it. Um, and uh, of course you always should take a good look at, you know, whether your app even needs it. Uh, but I think solely for the uh, performance benefit you can get from it and like all the other um, awesome, you know, things you can do with it, definitely worth it. Definitely um, give it a shot. So yeah, thanks for watching uh, and I'll see you in the next one.